This is a quick one. I just want to show some of my tools that I'm playing with, and it's always good to share your toys. Um, all of these things are there to actually allow you to do screencasts, to do little demos, to do screenshots of things that you're doing. Because one of the biggest problems we have with our materials is that they can be sometimes really dry. Like lots of text, lots of information, instead of showing people what we're doing. So the first tool I want to show you is called Lysecap, which is an incredibly good name because it doesn't sound an awful like or something <laughs> awful. But wow. it's the only one uh, that is cross-platform that I found for doing that. And what Lysecap does is actually allow you to do captions and save them as, uh, as animated GIFs at the same time. So when you open this one, you do it like Lice Cap, you get this screen here that you can resize and you can move that to the place that you actually want to record. So you say, okay, this thing here is cool. You press the record button. It asks you for the name of the, uh, of the GIF that you want to generate. It has a pre-roll of three seconds. And then you could, for example, go to the browser and do all the things that you do in there, like shift this thing around right now. Once you're done, you just say stop. And when you now go to the downloads folder, you have this woo.gif thing in there, which now is an animated GIF of that what you just recorded. And that's incredibly useful for a two-step, three-step process where you don't want people to have a video and have to actually go to YouTube and these kind of things. Of course, the quality is GIF 256 uh, colors. Not that amazing, but it actually doesn't stop anybody from can you, can clocking. Can you give a great example of, of one, one that you've done this way that really just... Yeah, you did the responsive design. The responsive design view, for example, is one of them that I showed with that, that, that you showed like, okay, switch around and uh, do these kind of things, like in the developer tools. Also, another one we did with that was in the developer tools was the auto-completion of CSS attributes, for example. So when you don't want to do a full screencast, that's a very simple way of doing that. It's called Lysecap. I'm recording this as a screencast right now, and I'm going to put a list out of all the tools and where you can download them so you don't need to worry about them. If you are much more of a, co a command line guy and you want to show off our build tools, there's something like that for the command line as well. It's called Showterm, and that one allows you actually to make screencasts of your terminal and actually while you're typing in and, doing it, uh, uh, and playing it back as a video, and you can see this here now, if you start playing this one back, you can actually play it back slow or you can play it back fast and you can stop it as well. So this one is for command line stuff, which is fascinating and beautiful things and everybody likes to look at command lines. Now, let's talk a bit about piracy. It, to do piracy properly, you can actually use YouTube download. A lot of times you find... I believe there's an add-on. Here's your problem. All the add-ons install ads into your page by now. There, there are several YouTube download add-ons that get, keep getting blocked by YouTube and also keep, getting, uh, keep getting, putting malware into your page by, by allowing you to download YouTube videos. They could solve that problem by allowing a download button in YouTube, much like you do in, for example, Vimeo. Because a lot of times I find screenshot, uh, screencasts or I find presentations of other people that are Creative Commons but I cannot actually download them. I cannot show them live on stage. But you will never be online on stage. Forget this immediately. You cannot go to YouTube live on stage in any conference and show that because the wireless will be down and it will be doing terrible things to you. The cool thing about YouTube DL is like if you go to YouTube and, and watch it or look at anything, probably not. Best mobile off the final showdown. Half naked wow. lady showing <laughs> Firefox phones. That's awesome. You just go to that one, copy it, you go to your terminal, you type in YouTube, download, put the thing in there, and it does all the things for you. It just downloads it to your hard drive and you're done. You don't have to do any extensions, you don't have to do any renaming. It gives it the name of the title of the YouTube video as well. Once you found a YouTube video where you want to actually take a part of it out of it, you can actually convert it and edit it with those two tools. So there's a Miro video converter, which converts everything to everything in video formats. And there's uh, MPEG Stream Clip for Mac and Windows, which looks beautiful. You can see there's obviously a designer working on that thing. But it actually, again, is a tool that I've been using for like four years right now that does everything you want to do. So let's take that video that I just downloaded, Best Mobile OS uh, Final Showdown. Go to my bender here where it has this, Best Mobile OS Final Showdown. You drag that into an uh, MPEG stream clip, and then you can actually just so okay, go to where I want to go. Okay, this is a cool OS. Press uh, out, press Command X, put it, put it to the end of where you want to go. Press I, 
press command X and you got a smaller video. And then you can save file, <coughs> sorry, save as. It has presets to all kind of uh, things that you want, MP4, QuickTime, other formats. What it doesn't do is MPEG stream clip and that's why Miro is better that way. So if I now save this one as an MPEG4 for example and make the MP4, move. It does that in the background and with uh, with our with our hardware nowadays you don't have the problem that there's lots of lag, you can do that in a few seconds. I do this with my talks, I record my screencasts, cut them immediately, upload them normally at the conference and throw them out to people that way. Once this is done we can actually just drag it into the mirror encoder and convert it to the other formats that we might want to have because Miro does all these things before the devices as well. So Android devices and uh, MPEG devices and WebM. So now I've got Moo.mp4 uh, here. And when I take this Moo.mp4, I put this into this one. I now can say it should be for Apple TV, for iPad, for iPhone and so on and so forth, or Android, or for formats that actually say like, I just want to have the video as WebM HD, which is the one that we normally should set for, yeah? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. And that's basically just a few of the tools that you can use to make your thing better. One thing I still have to show though, if you show Firefox OS on screen, <laughs> if you show Firefox OS on screen, there's a tool called Droid at Screen, which connects any, um, any Android device to your computer. So here you now have the key on device being shown on the screen. So if you want to show your, your live device to somebody I can't, my cable is too short. Um, if you want to show your device to the audience, you can easy, either put it in your camera and then you have the problem with, this, with, with, with the mirroring of stuff. And this is a great tool for showing that. It's only at 10 frames per second, so for performance it's horrible. But for just showing what, a, what something on a device looks like, it's absolute magic. We used it at all the hack days when people showed their Firefox OS hacks instead of, uh, instead of having them all go there and show their phone or something. That's a tool for doing that. It's Java, but it's good. It's Java. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>